Hey, welcome to Analog Output. And the next circuit I'm going to be building involves matched transistors. So you see this sometimes. You've got a circuit diagram that's got a transistor here and a transistor here, kind of back to back, and it says they're supposed to be matched. And there's two ways you can do that. One is you can buy matched transistor pair of components. You can buy a, a single component that has two transistors in it that are well matched to one another. Sometimes they're actually made at the same time on the same piece of silicon. And uh, that's one approach. Another approach is to just get a bag of discrete TO92 transistors, single transistors, and go through them and find ones that match. The idea is that in the circuit, usually something's happening like you're looking at the difference in the emitter current from between one transistor and the other, and it's only meaningful if the two transistors actually behave in exactly the same way. And just because they're both 2N3904 or both BC547 or whatever, um, doesn't mean that they actually behave in exactly the same way. There's some variation from one to another. So what you have to do is find two transistors that really do behave the same way. So how do you do that? Well, there's a an article on the Cassitronics blog about matching transistors, and in that article he shows uh, a circuit that was designed by a guy named Ian Fritz. And it's a very simple circuit. It's got three resistors and one diode, and uh, it's got sockets to plug in two transistors, and you plug in two transistors, and you do some measurements. And it's, in principle, pretty easy. In practice, it's kind of time-consuming, but it's what you have to do. So I built this circuit initially on a breadboard, and I had some difficulties with it, uh, some sort of trouble getting reproducible results and then I noticed f weird things happening like uh, on this breadboard there's these points here that are connected together and these points here that connect together they're not connected to each other internally but you can see there's a wire connecting one to the other so if you plug in a wire here or plug in a wire here it shouldn't make any difference they're all connected together I plugged in a wire here and I plugged in a wire there and I got different results I don't know it's it's just weird um, I ended up deciding the solderless breadboard was probably just there's just too much flakiness involved so I went ahead and I built the circuit on a piece of strip board. Here's the strips. Here's the circuit. Uh, as you can see, pretty tiny, not much to it. Um, but this is what you use to match transistors. So let me show you how that goes. All right, so we have our circuit set up over here. We've got power connected there. We've got a couple of leads connected to a multimeter here. We're measuring the voltage difference between these two resistors. There's clipped onto the resistor leads there. We've got one transistor plugged in here. This is a BC547 NPN transistor. This is going to be our reference transistor. The idea is we're going to take um, a bunch of transistors and we're going to pick one out, stick it in on the left, and then we're going to measure all the other transistors against that one. And then any that have the same measurement against the reference transistor are going to be well matched to each other. Okay, so let's take our first transistor and plug it in. This is often the hardest part, is getting this thing plugged in. 
All right. Turn on power. And you can see we're reading 2.8 millivolts, except it's now 2.7, 2.6, 2.5, 2.4. The idea is that these things are temperature sensitive. So just the act of picking up a transistor and putting it in place with your warm little fingers heats up the transistor. And then as it cools off, the readings change. And what you want is for these two to come to the same temperature. So we're gonna to have to sit here and wait for this to stabilize. And this might take several seconds, might take a couple minutes. Uh, it depends on circumstances. It helps if you do this in an area that's um, not close to a, an air conditioning vent or a heating vent or something like that. Uh, it can help to set up a little fan to blow air across, to circulate the air, uh, to help keep the temperature stable. Because if the temperature is going up and down in the room, then it's going to affect things. Okay, it's been a minute and a half, and it's pretty stable at minus 1.7 millivolts. If you want to be really conservative, you can, you know, go away and read a book for five minutes, set a timer, come back in five minutes, take a reading, plug in the next transistor, go and read a book for another five minutes. Um, but it looks like about a minute and a half is probably enough to get these things to their stable place. All right, so we're going to take that transistor out. We're going to put it aside. We're going to put it on a piece of paper and write minus 1.7 next to it. And then we're going to take our next transistor, and yeah, we're going to plug that one in. Well, that one didn't take long to stabilize at all. It's about minus 0 0.6, so we'll take that one out. Put it on a piece of paper, Mark minus 0 0.6 on that one and keep going go through you know, a dozen two dozen 50 however many transistors you feel like going through and you can probably find uh, enough good matches in you know a bag of 25 or 50 transistors for whatever you need to do how good is a good match well I've read Two millivolts is good enough for the kinds of circuits we're doing. On the other hand, I'm not sure how authoritative that is. So better than two millivolts would be a good thing. And fortunately, um, two millivolts is not too high a bar. Back in the old days when Bob Moog was building these things in the 1960s and 70s, I think transistors uh, varied a lot more between one another. But... Um, but these days, with the manufacturing techniques they have, they seem to be pretty consistent. And I went through a couple dozen uh, BC547s, and nearly all of them were within 2 millivolts of each other. There were just a few outside of that range. And I was able to pair off most of them into pairs that differed by only uh, about 0.1 millivolts. So the idea is... We've got our, our uh, minus 1.7 over there, and we've got our minus 0.6. We keep going, and if we find another one, minus 1.7, we can pair it off with our first one. If we find another minus 0.6, we can pair it off with that one. And go through a couple dozen transistors. You can probably pair off most of them. And there you are, transistor matching 101. You spend an hour or so, and you got um, five, six, eight, ten matched transistor pairs out of a bag of 25, 30, 40, 50. Um, however long you want to spend at it, probably you don't want to spend very long at it, but, you know, do what you have to do, and you got your matched transistors, and you can go ahead and build your circuit. Hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, hit likes, hit subscribe, you'll get a notification. And hopefully the next video you'll see what I'm doing with these matched transistors. And I'll see you then on Analog Output.